Good morning, Simon. Should I contact the ground station? No, but how about some music? Great. Let's play your favorite hits. That's what interaction with Simon will be like on the International Space Station. Simon can see, hear, and react to his environment. He's currently being tested at the Cologne facility where the human astronauts train for their missions. He's due to accompany German astronaut Alexander Gerst when he joins the ISS crew this coming summer. Simon is designed to be a digital helper along the lines of Siri or Alexa, the first flying astronaut assistant featuring artificial intelligence. We have an autonomous, free-floating robot, if you want to call it that. That's new for Europeans. There's never been anything like it in the Columbus module that you see behind me. We're also entering unknown territory in terms of work safety for the astronauts. We have to make sure Simon doesn't move too fast, for example, and that in weightless conditions he is able to calculate distances properly as he makes his way around the Columbus module. That was tested on a special parabolic flight. The aircraft's extreme maneuvers create short periods of freefall to simulate zero gravity. Simon's developers need to know how he'll move with his small propulsion motors and navigate in weightlessness. He's not programmed with a map, but has to find his way around on his own. Simon creates a map for himself from his navigation camera. It's a stereo camera. That means he has two pictures he can superimpose on each other to measure and determine distances between objects. He selects orientation points on the pictures he receives based on contrast, for example, and compares them with the new picture he gets so he can see where he's going. But the budding astronaut is unable to hold his position in the first 22-second-long zero-gravity phase during the parabolic flight. He spins, loses control, and is ultimately caught and held by the scientists. It's not working. When I let go, he drifts away. The development team is puzzled because according to the control software, the robot is reacting and attempting to stabilize himself. Gradually, they realize the source of the problem. The problem is that the aircraft has a certain residual acceleration that Simon has to contend with. It looks like he's lost control, but he hasn't. That means the human beings in the cockpit aren't perfect. Three experienced test pilots working together have brought the aircraft into freefall dozens of times to simulate weightlessness. But there are still forces on board that are stronger than Simon's propulsion motors. But the robot learns. With a bit more human help when zero gravity begins, he's able to float in place and make some flying maneuvers. So it looks like he'll be able to manage in space. It works. Great. And back again. Back in Cologne, Simon's data connections are tested. His speech comprehension is powered by the IBM Watson Artificial Intelligence software system. That's what enables him to make playful statements. I'm R2-D2. Just kidding. My name is Simon, and I will support you. On the ISS, the robotic talking head will guide astronaut Alexander Gast step by step through selected experiments and record photos, videos and voice memos. We're hoping that Alexander Gerst finds Simon interesting and that he'll engage with him a bit. We want to develop him further so he'll really be accepted as a crew member for future space missions and that when they venture further afield to the Moon or Mars, systems like this will accompany and interact with the astronauts. Okay. Simon can also play games, tell jokes and make faces. And after about two years in development, the artificial astronaut also has a philosophical side. Life is 10% what happens to you and 90% how you react to it. Right you are, Simon. And on that note, have a good trip.